The authoritarian brutality of the Nazi party was felt in all directions. Resistance movements would rise, even with children stamping a mark against the regime. Welcome to Take a Seat, the channel dedicated to extraordinary people and fascinating historical events. You can help the channel grow by liking, subscribing and commenting. Rising Against Tyranny the Edelweiss Pirates were a group born out of opposition to the Hitler Youth and Nazi authority over German people. Throughout Germany, these pirates would become prominent around 1936 when the Hitler Youth became compulsory. They escaped the Hitler Youth by leaving school at the age of 14, which was legal at the time, and as they were under 18, they weren't called for military service. Dotted around different regions, the group name varied, as in Cologne, they were known as the Navajos, the Roving Dudes in Essen, and the Kittelback Pirates in Oberhausen and Dusseldorf. The name and symbol came from the Edelweiss flower, and the teenagers were notable for doing the exact opposite of everything the Hitler Youth did. They ensured they weren't segregated between boys and girls, and wore American-style clothing such as white t-shirts and jeans, Others wore lederhosen. These youngsters would take hikes and go camping. The Hitler Youth did this also, yet the pirates, while free and liberated, would listen to state band music such as swing, jazz and blues, and even sometimes played songs composed specifically by Jewish musicians. From Antics to Disruption the authorities knew of the pirates, but didn't take much notice at first, seeing them as an irritant, but things would exacerbate once the war started. The pirates, when they heard aircraft above, would wait to see if anything would be floating down to them, and when Allies bombers dropped anti-Nazi propaganda, they would quickly gather as much as they could and put them through the letterboxes in their neighbourhood. Violent acts would start as some would throw bricks through war manufacturing and munition factories while others put sugar in the fuel tanks of Nazi officer cars. In 1943, the Gestapo was contacted by party leaders in Dusseldorf as these gangs were beating up Hitler Youth patrols and were responsible for anti-war and anti-Hitler graffiti in the subway. Acts such as these would bring punishment if caught, but it may not be as harsh as you'd think from these mass exterminating fascists. Authorities would shave the heads of any apprehended and force them to wear more regimented clothing, essentially forcing conformity in them. Heinrich Himmler, the Reich leader of the Nazi party, even noted that authorities weren't disciplining the movement enough, expecting total loyalty to the party and Hitler himself. He wrote to Reinhard Heydrich, the head of the SS before he was killed, explaining that two or three years in a concentration camp was suitable for the pirates' actions. Life on the Line Gertrude Cohn was nine when the Nazis came to power in 1933. Her father was a communist and staunch anti-fascist. He was arrested multiple times by Nazi authorities and died in a concentration camp in 1942. Gertrude made him proud. Refusing to join the League of German Girls, Cohn co-founded the Edelweiss Pirates movement in Cologne. Her codename was Mucky. Cohn and the Pirates, true to nature, wrote anti-Nazi slogans, broke into food stores and helped hide non-desirables from authorities while waiting to escape. The Cohn family hid a Jewish musician in their garden for about a year and a half from early 1938 and took food and water to him. At around 16 years old in 1942, Cohn was arrested and jailed at Brawweiler for nine months when Gertrude and other pirates climbed to the top of Cologne's train station and dropped anti-Nazi leaflets to the public below. She noted that she was beaten by the Gestapo and they even broke her arm. Once released in 1943, Cohn and her mother escaped to the mountains in South Germany, working on a farm until the war ended where they could finally return to their home in Cologne. Fritz Thielen was six when Hitler tore German democracy apart and he was enrolled straight into the Hitler Youth. He rejected the regimentation and militarization the Nazis thrashed upon the German children and in 1940 at the age of 13 he was expelled. 
Silent joins the Ford Motor Company as an apprentice but became disillusioned while his city was being destroyed from consistent bombing and witnessing the slave labourers around him being worked under dire conditions. In 1942, he joined the Edelweiss Pirates, finding companionship through a joint disdain against the fascists and was arrested multiple times and tortured by the Gestapo. These brutal times would not discourage Fritz, however, and he continued where in 1944 he and others were rounded up for graffiti, listening to the BBC on the radio, distributing Allied leaflet drops, beating up Hitler youth patrols and helping escaped POWs and Jewish people. He was arrested again in 1944, along with many others, and moved around until being settled in Dachau. Aware of what awaits, Fritz Seilen did everything he could and was able to escape and hid, looting and stealing the little food he could to survive. To say he was lucky diminishes the horrific experience he went through, but 13 of the Edelweiss pirates who could not escape were hanged in public by the Gestapo on the 10th of November 1944. Legacy when the war ended, the West had a problem as law and order had to be contained during a time of recovery and severe hardship after towns and cities were destroyed. To be able to do this without too much disruption and effort on their part, the Western superpowers kept on former Nazi members who had all been judges. Due to this, German legislation simply just didn't change along with attitudes within the legal hierarchy. And so, youth movements such as the Edelweiss Pirates weren't recognised and members were still scared to share their stories, until recently. Fritz Thielen remarks that when coming out of hiding, he tried to join Ford Motors again, but couldn't until the British got involved. And when he did, he saw all the Nazi party members still in place, and rather be seen as a resistance fighter against the evil regime, he was casted as a common criminal. The heroism and bravery would be recognised in the early 2000s and a 2005 film based on the Edelweiss Pirates was released. In 2011, Hergen Rotters, the then governing mayor of Cologne, presented Gertrude and Fritz, along with three others, with the Order of Merit of the Federal Republic of Germany. The Edelweiss Pirates, a group of teenagers unwilling to succumb to the oppressive regime of Hitler and his Nazi authoritarianism. Approximately 5,000 strong across Germany, putting their lives in danger to disrupt the killing machine, and some would even be sacrificed for their bravery. Thanks for taking a seat. Links to resources are in the description below and please consider liking, sharing and subscribing and why not comment to tell me who you'd like to hear about next. Thanks again and I hope to see you very soon.